Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Vanilla Minecraft. Episode number 10. We finally made it to double digits. Woohoo! So, you may notice that we're not on my island at the moment. <laughs> in fact, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and we're looking for a cave. Now, the reason we're doing that is that I have some stuff to blab to you guys today about, just a little bit, and unfortunately, I'm not smart enough to be able to build and talk at the same time. I can barely do those th two things independently, much less doing them at the same time. So, I'm going to try and find a cave, and then we'll hop in, and I'm going to talk to you guys for a few minutes about some questions that I've been getting. Now, I know that's a little boring sounding. Try to bear with me. I'll do my best to keep it brief. But I'm going to go find a cave, and I'll be back with you guys in just a minute. Okay, so I found my way down into a cave, which I've already explored a bit of, because I did try and record this once already, and uh, didn't go so well. Turns out I can't even cave and talk at the same time. <laughs> but I will try this again. So what I want to talk with you guys about today is the future of the channel and the types of content that are going to be on it. So, the reason I'm bringing this up now is that I've gotten quite a few questions, especially since I started this series, asking if I'm going to do more than just vanilla Minecraft with the channel. And the simple answer to that question is yes, I would love to, and I have every intention of doing that, but I want to talk with you guys in a little bit more detail about that. So, obviously, vanilla Minecraft, that's going to continue. I absolutely love this series, it's been such a blast to do, especially thanks to you guys. So, this is going to continue for the foreseeable future. I don't see any reason for this to stop anytime soon. So, don't worry, no matter what we start, no matter what else happens with the channel, this will continue on. Oh, you sure? And, yeah, so Vanilla Minecraft, that's going to continue. Um, I would also like to do a bit more with it, though. I would actually like to do more one-off videos than I'm currently doing. Is there a spider spawner down here? Sounds like it. <laughs> well, we'll find it when we find it. But I'd like to do more one-off videos. Things like tutorials and whatnot. Uh, the type of stuff that I did before I started this series, actually, I would like to do more of. They are super time-consuming, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm actually working on a couple at the moment, even. But it uh, might be a little while before they're done. So bear with me on that. But I do intend to do more stuff like that as well. And, yeah, just vanilla Minecraft in general probably always going to be a staple here on the channel. I just, I love the game. I don't see myself getting sick of it. I've been playing it for years and haven't really slowed down. So, yeah, probably going to be a thing for a long time. Now, moving beyond Minecraft, or beyond vanilla Minecraft at least, I want to kind of discuss the type of content that I want to focus on first. Because talking about, like, specific games and stuff like that isn't really applicable to what I'm focusing on. So when I choose what I want to make with my channel, I kind of want to focus on things that are creative. Things that allow me to make interesting content that it kind of stands out from other stuff. So like even with vanilla Minecraft, even though it is the most kind of overplayed, let's played thing in the entire world, I can still do unique stuff with it because it's just so creative and open. And that's honestly my favorite part about the entire game. So, I want to focus on games that have that vibe to them. Games, games that allow some level of creativity. Not necessarily at the same stage as Minecraft, because very, very few games reach that. But, just games that are open and creative, rather than linear. So, in order to kind of fully explain what I mean by that, I think we need to look at a few games kind of on a scale. From super open and creative to more linear and kind of closed. So... To kind of give an example of what I mean, on the far end we have Minecraft, which is arguably the most kind of creative game you can really get. You can come on here and you can build anything you can really imagine. If you want to build a, you know, giant mushroom, you can do that. If you want to build a giant stone face that shoots fireballs, go ahead. A tropical beach, a modern house, pixel art, whatever. You know, there's, there's very few limitations on what you can do with Minecraft, which is awesome. And that's the kind of stuff that I really want to focus on and want to do more of. So, Minecraft itself is actually fairly expansive. Obviously, there's more than just vanilla Minecraft. So, you know, there's obviously there's PvP and minigames and custom maps. That stuff is much more linear than vanilla Minecraft. So, I'm probably not going to focus on stuff like that. That's not to say it'll never happen, but 
it's not really what I want to focus on. So for the time being, we're not going to be doing any stuff like that. But what we could do relating to Minecraft is modded. Now, modded Minecraft, I'll come right out and say I'm definitely going to do a series on eventually. I don't know when exactly, I don't know what pack it'll be, or if the pack even exists yet. I might wait until, like, the next big pack comes out and do that. I don't know. But I definitely, definitely want to do a modded Minecraft series. Especially because I've never actually... Oh, goodness. No, 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 no. <laughs> Especially because I've never actually really played modded Minecraft before. Now, I've played vanilla Minecraft for years at this point, since shortly after the official release, I think. Or, like, kind of early, maybe late beta days, something like that. But I've never really played modded. In fact, the only mod, uh, the only gameplay altering mod, I should say, because I've used Optifine and shaders and whatnot, but the only gameplay altering mod I've ever really played with was Pixelmon. Back when it very first started, I played on a really small little server with Pixelmon. And that was a blast. And unfortunately, Rip Pixelmon, they uh, got kind of shut down recently so they can no longer develop it, which I'm very, very sad to hear. Kind of hoping there's some uh, kind of community initiative to keep that going, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, mod packs, like proper modded Minecraft with, you know, all the crazy Tinker's Construct and Thomcraft and uh, mechanism and whatever other things exist. <laughs> Keep in mind, I've never played modded, so I'm going purely based on what I've heard in videos. <laughs> but um, stuff like that, I would love to do a modded series, and I absolutely intend to at some point. So that's a thing. No guarantees when it'll happen, but it's totally going to happen at some point. <laughs> I have no doubt. So that covers Minecraft stuff, I think. So like vanilla Minecraft, obviously going to continue. Modded, definitely going to happen at some point. One-off videos, definitely going to happen over time. And other stuff, maybe here and there. Spider? Probably cave spider. Do not want. So, moving on from Minecraft. Kind of one step up on our scale of creativity and linearness. Hello, creeper. Uh, one step up from that, we have all kinds of games that are open that allow you to do whatever you want, play however you want, and have some degree of creativity to them. So to give some completely random examples, and keep in mind this doesn't mean I'm playing these games or anything like that, it's just examples, but uh, Terraria comes to mind, a game that I own but have never played, so I'm basing this purely on uh, my own <laughs> assumptions based on what I've seen. But from what I've seen, Terraria is basically 2D Minecraft, with a little bit less of a focus on building and a bit more of a focus on adventure and stuff like that. So, you know, that I think, I think that counts. You know, because there's still building, there's still the openness, you kind of handle things however you want. Games like that are what I'm after. Did I already go down here? Kind of looks like it. Yeah, let's torch that. Um, another one would be, say, Ark. Which, you know, you have the base building, you have all the dinosaur taming stuff. You kind of play however you want to. It's not necessarily the most open game in the world, or the game with the most stuff to do. But, you know, it's open-ended and kind of creative. Uh, then you have, say, Unturned, which is a silly little zombie survival game with uh, building aspects. You can build your own bases, you can build custom vehicles, stuff like that. That is really cool. Um, Seven Days to Die is similar to that in that regard, except much, much more based on, like, realism and brutality. <laughs> and that game is really brutal. That one I have actually played quite a bit back in the day. I'm several versions behind now. But uh, games like that where, you know, you're building up bases and stuff. Uh, let's see. It's not even just games like that either. You know, not just these survival building games. Um even stuff like City Skylines, for example, where you're building up cities, like SimCity-esque style. That is super creative, especially once you get into mods and stuff. You can do all kinds of tiny little details and work out all kinds of interesting little things. So, stuff like that. Uh, Planet Coaster, that's another one. You know, you're building your own theme park. You're making all your own designs and building your own roller coasters and stuff like that. Super creative, super interesting. I like stuff like that. Then, you know, maybe we'll go one notch up from that, and you have games that have a linear progression, but are a little bit more open than just a purely linear game. So, things that come to mind there would be probably Skyrim and Fallout New Vegas. 
And I say that, I those are two more games that I own but have never actually played. Uh, if you're seeing a pattern here. <laughs> I'm one of those people with a 250 plus game Steam library that I never really touch. Kind of unfortunate because I would really love to play some of these games. But uh, anyway, <laughs> games like that. Um, at this point, I don't really know that I would be able to make interesting content out of them. I don't know that I'd be able to do anything too super interesting with them that other people weren't already doing. So, you know, I, they're, they're open and they're great games and they'd be a ton of fun to play and I'd probably even have fun making videos on them, but my perspective just wouldn't be that different from anybody else's. So, I don't know that I really want to go towards games like that. And then, of course, you have the last notch, which is like the most linear style games. Games where you're purely playing content that the game developers intended and doing it in kind of a linear way, at least to a certain extent. And this is the vast majority of games. Everything from, you know, Far Cry and Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed, all the way over to racing games or even over to MMOs like World of Warcraft. So those are all great games. They're super fun, good times all around, but making a video on them, you're kind of just reacting to what the game developers have created. I'm just going in lurps this entire time. I don't even know how I ended up down here. <laughs> Need to find somewhere new. Uh, up here, maybe? Eesh. Is this another spot without a spawner? I've seen several spots with no spawner now. I don't... Why is that? I've never seen that before. I've never had that problem. Unless it's like way back. No, there's just no spawner in here. Huh. That's interesting. Anyway, <laughs> um, games like that, games that are super linear, um, they're, they're fine. They're great games, but they just, they don't allow that creativeness, that unique perspective that I want to have in the content that I make. So I'm probably never really going to do games like that. At least I don't intend to now. I will say that all of this could change in the future, but for right now, I just don't really think that that's the type of stuff that I could make really interesting videos with. So that's kind of what I meant by all of that. The linear games are just not really as creative. I'd like to do stuff like, even in Minecraft, even though it's the most played game ever and the most let's played game and everyone and their mother has done a series on it, even though that's the case, I can still do something that's unique with it. I can still do things that are at least somewhat interesting with it and, you know, have my own perspective. So that's the kind of stuff that I really want to focus on. There's another set of webs, and I don't see a spawner in this one either. Though I do hear spiders, so maybe there is? Hmm. I don't know. I hear quite a few spiders. Maybe there are some in the back of this one. I guess we'll find out eventually. But, yeah. So that... I think mostly covers what I wanted to say. We're going to be doing more stuff. We'll probably be playing other games other than vanilla Minecraft, but they will mostly be games that are kind of creative, kind of open-ended, stuff like that. So, goodness at the skeletons. <laughs> Oi. Oh, man. Three-way skelly fight. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. Okay, it's one more, right? Yep. Ooh. Ooh. So yeah, creative games, games that allow me to do unique things. That is the focus of the channel, I think. <laughs> Stuff that allows me to do my own unique perspective. I wonder what enchants are on that bow. Power one. Garbage. So, yep, that is pretty much what I wanted to say. <laughs> So we'll be doing stuff like that in the future. No guarantees on when I'll be doing anything new or anything like that. If you have any suggestions, be sure to tell me because I always want to hear them, but um, <laughs> no promises. We'll see how it goes. But that is my ramble for right now. Ouch. And uh, one last thing I want to say, don't worry about uh, this talk of like new series and stuff like that. I'm definitely never going to slow this one down. As I said before, Vanilla Minecraft is absolutely my jam. And uh, the series is just absolutely the best. So I have no intention of stopping that. So don't worry. <laughs> if you're the type that only wants to watch vanilla Minecraft, that is totally understandable. You don't need to watch anything else that I do. And, you know, it'll just be there eventually, I assume. But I think that that is enough rambling for right now. 
I have some other things that I want to blab to you guys about, but <laughs> I think you could probably use a break from that. So let's go back to the island and get a little bit more done there. And we'll see how the rest of the episode turns out. All right, so if you're still here, then bravo to you, because I did not realize how long I had been rambling in that previous clip. If you've sat all the way through that and you're still conscious, then kudos to you. Anyway, here we are back on our island, and you may recall we've been kind of working on the surface of the island a bit. We started the process of renovating things. We redid our beach area, we redid the pond area, we experimented with some littler changes, and we also started working on our valley here and turning it into more of a kind of proper cliff faces and stuff like that. So all of that has a long way to go yet, and the entire surface of the island has way more areas we need to get to, and all of that needs to happen. But there's also one other area that I never really covered. I haven't even actually acknowledged that it needs to be redone, and that is the caves beneath the surface. So because all of our builds, or at least the vast majority of them, are completely underground, everything tends to be built inside of caves and be connected together with caves. And those caves themselves need to be renovated both the connecting caves and, in cases like my storage room here, even the room itself, which, you know, the cave ceiling uh, aspect of it needs to be redone. And the reason I say that is that it's just kind of bland and boring. It all kind of looks like this, you know, just stone with some leaves on it. And that's not terrible. It gets the job done. But I think that we could make it look a lot more detailed and interesting without it looking too terrible. So I want to try and experiment with that a little bit yet today. And we'll probably only do it in one cave, that way I can get feedback from you guys and kind of see how you feel about it, and then we can go from there. But we have one area that is actually perfect for that test, and that's right here. So if you've been around since episode number one, you probably recognize what this cave is. This is the cave that leads down to our mushroom cavern that we spent the first few episodes building. And I just left it barren, I never came back and detailed it which means that we can experiment with what we want to do with this cave here and use it as kind of a template for the rest of our projects. Did I seriously never clean these chests up? Oh, <laughs> that's gonna suck. There's so much stuff down here yet. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to clean all that up and I'm also gonna have to do a bit of resource gathering as well because I'm missing a lot of stuff that we're gonna need to do this. But I'm going to go ahead and redo this cave, decorate it all the way down, try and give it some, uh, some interest and see how it turns out. And yeah, we'll see how it goes and I'll get back to you guys once it's done. So here is our cave, the kind of base template of what we may be doing in the future. Now I will say that this cave from the very beginning was kind of small and cramped. So getting down here now that there's all these leaves and stuff in the way is almost a little claustrophobic at times and you got to kind of weave around a little bit. But honestly I think that actually worked out really well for this cave because this one doesn't lead to any big structures or anything. It's more of just like a natural cave going down, and it just so happens to have opened up to our cavern, our uh, mushroom cavern, I mean. So, I think it's okay that it's kind of unkempt and cramped feeling, and not really meant for people to be walking down it. So I think that's kind of cool. As for all of the stuff we added, obviously all of the kind of leaves and things, which don't make a great deal of sense, but they make the cave feel much more lively and interesting, so I think they're nice. And you may have noticed we also have some particles coming down. On one side we have water particles kind of dripping through because there's a water source block on top of this block. 
And I think that's really cool. I love doing that, giving the kind of drippy cave aesthetic. Unfortunately, because this cave was so packed in and is just kind of a corkscrew going down, the floor of one layer is the ceiling of the next, and it means that we couldn't do that all that often other than here at the beginning. So we didn't get to do that too much, but in other caves we can probably do that quite a lot, and I think that should be pretty cool. I also did the floating gravel trick so that we have a couple of these particles coming in. Stuff like, you know, little dust or kind of crumbling in ceiling coming down. I think that helps liven things up a bit as well. And that trick, by the way, which um, it occurs to me that a lot of you probably don't know how to do that because it is dependent on a bug. Oh, gravel's in my hand. Okay. If you plant down a uh, too tall flower like this and then you put a block that has gravity on top of it and then you break the bottom block of the flower, it won't fall. It'll just kind of stay floating there because it doesn't receive a block update. So that is how you can get these floating gravel or floating sand if you want the particles dropping down. Or indeed any other block that has gravity as well, though I don't really know why you'd use any of the others. But yeah, that's super cool. Just be aware that if you place a block next to this or you update this in any way, it will fall down. And if you update one of them, like if you have a bunch of these in a row and that one starts falling, it'll make all of them fall. So do be very careful with that. Anyway, moving on, we can take a stroll down our little cave here, and yeah, it's pretty much just the same thing you saw at the beginning. I did spread some mushrooms in here, and I think that's really nice. I think it breaks up the, uh, the kind of monotony of the caves a bit. So I think having mushrooms around is nice. I do have a bunch of them in the walls as well to try and prevent them from spreading too much, so hopefully that works. And this cave is also a little unique with the mushrooms in that... I thought that it might be cool to make them get kind of more and more prominent as we got closer to the mushroom cavern. So that's what I did. In normal caves, they'll probably be kind of even across the entire thing. But uh, here, why is there a leaf block here? <laughs> okay, then. But uh, with here, you know, I wanted more and more to kind of pop up as we got closer and closer down to the bottom. And I think we're missing one right here, aren't we? Yeah, we're missing a red one. So this is what I did. I basically hid some in the walls because otherwise the uh, the mushrooms would spread out and just kind of take over the entire cave. So that's cool. I think that looks okay. And it leads all the way down here. And obviously I didn't finish up this cave. I still want this to lead to something eventually. Not entirely set on what quite yet, but there are a few projects I want to build down here. So we'll see how that goes. But that is our cave for the time being. So be sure to tell me what you think of that. And if we should... Apply that style to the rest of our caves throughout the islands, as well as our kind of builds that are inside of caves, like my storage room. Should we do more kind of this messy style and water dripping down and gravel particles and stuff like that? So that leads down to our mushroom cave, which is still looking pretty cool, I think. It's been a little while since we've been down here. I still need to come down and uh, kind of work out some details because the ground is a little flat yet. And maybe just a little more detail on the walls would be nice, but... We will get to that when we get to another project down here, which maybe might not be uh, too far into the future. We'll see. But with our cave done and with the fact that I blabbed for an exceptionally long time at the beginning of this episode, we're actually kind of running low on time now. But there is one other thing I wanted to talk with you guys about today, and it's something that I wanted to talk about last episode and just kind of ran out of time, but I think it's an important topic. So... Even though I've blabbed quite a lot, bear with me, we're going to try and cover that yet today. Now, I'm going to go and clean up my inventory and everything and get some stuff prepared. And then I'll be back with you guys and uh, we'll wrap up the episode and take care of our little topic. Okay, so before we call it a day, there's one more thing that I wanted to talk with you guys about as we wander around aimlessly here. I know I've done a lot of talking today. I know it's been a little bit less productive than I like to be. But I think that this is an important subject and I really want to get this covered today. So what I want to talk about is Minecraft 1.13. Specifically, over the last couple weeks, Jappa, or Jasper, a new member of Mojang, has begun redoing all of the textures in the game. Literally all of them. Every block, every item, every GUI element, everything is getting looked over and the vast majority of them are being tweaked, if not completely redone. And this is because the art in the game has been really inconsistent. 
It's just kind of been thrown together by programmers as it was necessary. And it means that a lot of the textures just kind of are not fitting. Some are rougher than they logically should be. Some are too smooth. Some have like a lot of random noise in them while others don't. It's just not very consistent. And that's not really a huge problem, but they want the game to feel more consistent, more polished, and just look a bit better in general. So naturally, because this is going to change the look of the game a bit, and keep in mind they're not changing the entire thing, they're going to stick to what it looks like, they're just kind of tweaking everything to make it a little higher quality, but because it is going to change the look of the game, there's a lot of anger going around right now, because, well, it's a big change, and people don't really care for change. So... I want to bring this up now because I want to ask you guys to be critical of these changes. You don't need to just blindly accept them and say that everything is fine. You can be critical of them, but be productive with your criticism. Don't just be the people who shout at Mojang and say that, oh, you're wrong, these textures are awful, you're ruining the game, you should go kill yourself, stuff like that. Because they do get those comments. I've seen them. <laughs> I've seen them with every update we've gotten. And especially with changes like this that are so big and so divisive. So, that's why I'm bringing this up now. It's because the Minecraft community has been very, very negative in general to changes. Uh, especially the bigger changes. And this has caused a lot of problems in the past. It's why Minecraft ended up being sold to Microsoft, in fact. It's... It's why, in large parts, why Dinnerbone ended up stepping away from Minecraft for a solid year and taking a break from developing for it. And this is just conjecture on my part, but I also think it's why uh, Minecraft 1.9 wasn't a better update. I think that had the community been more willing to accept that the previous system wasn't amazing and been more willing to work with Mojang to create something cool, we probably would have other weapon types in the game. We might have more interesting combat mechanics and stuff like that. It might just have been way better than what we actually got if people were willing to accept that it was going to change. I feel like we got kind of the watered-down version of what could have been just because people were afraid of change. So, in while I have a very small voice in the grand scope of Minecraft, <laughs> I'm just this tiny little blip in the Minecraft ocean I want to encourage you guys, as any of you who are still listening, to not be part of that. To be, you know, a more productive member of the Minecraft society and, you know, to try and help the game progress rather than try your hardest to halt its progression. So I'm going to start showing you some of these textures. And at first they're going to feel weird, for sure, because you're so used to seeing the ones that we've had for so long now. And I want you to try to do your best to look at them objectively. Try and look at these textures and think of them in terms of which texture itself is better or worse. Don't try and think of them as, you know, oh, this is the old version that I always liked and this is some new version that I hate. And, you know, that's an important thing. I know it's very hard to overcome the nostalgia of everything, but... Try to think about it like that. Try to think of, is this texture genuinely better for the game or not? And if you don't like a texture, and that's completely fine, and there are going to be textures you don't like, no matter what, there always is, then give that feedback to Mojang. Like, really describe what it is you don't like. If a texture is blurry to you, or it looks too messy, you think it should be smoother, or it's too dark, or it's too light, convey that to Mojang, and more specifically, convey that to Jasper. And then, you know, they will actually listen. <laughs> They've actually been very, very receptive to feedback from the community. In fact, some of these textures have actually changed multiple times already based purely on community feedback. So if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to give them that chance and say, hey, I like this texture, but maybe it's a little bit too dark. Maybe you could brighten it up or it's a little too blurry. Maybe you should sharpen these edges a little bit. They will listen. Jasper will listen. He's been super great about that. He's been listening to everyone and taking in feedback. And I, I want to see more of that. I think that that's what will make the textures better is hearing from the community like that. So 
I am going to leave Jasper as well as Jeb's Twitters in the description. If you don't already follow them and if you use Twitter, uh, be sure to go down there and check them out. And that'll kind of keep you up to date on any textures that they post. Jeb actually tweets a lot of them himself. So be sure to follow him as well. But probably send your criticisms and your ideas and suggestions over to Jasper. And yeah, just try, try your hardest. Even if you really hate certain textures... Try to convey why that is and try to say so constructively instead of with hostility. You're far more likely to convince them to try out your ideas and try out different approaches to textures you don't like if you're actually giving them ideas instead of telling them just to go and, you know, never work on Minecraft again or anything like that. That, <laughs> that hostility just isn't good for anybody. It's been a huge problem in the Minecraft community for a long time and... I really hope to see absolutely none of that from anyone of you guys. So do your best to uh, be positive about everything, even if you're a little shifty about the changes. So with all of that said, I want to thank you guys for watching. <laughs> if you're still here, if I haven't bored you to sleep with all of the bland talking that I've done today, I know there was quite a lot of it and not a lot of productivity. Not really what I like to do with my episodes, but it was important talks, I feel. Next episode, we will try and be a little bit more productive and do something kind of cool. Looking forward to that, a project that I've needed to do for quite a while now. So hopefully you guys will be excited for that, because I certainly am. And hopefully it'll make up for uh, the lack of productivity today. So once again, thank you guys for watching. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.